to Storytime. I'm Jesse from the Fountain Valley Branch, and today we're going to be continuing the epic saga of Llama with Llama Rocks the Cradle of Chaos, written by Jonathan Stutzman, illustrated by Heather Fox, thanks to Macmillan Publishing for letting us read this. Llama Rocks the Cradle of Chaos. Long, long ago, Llama rocked the cradle of chaos. I am Llama, proclaimed Llama. Yesterday, yesterday was Llama's birthday, and Llama celebrated his birthday how he always did, surrounded by his best friends, wearing his fanciest party hat and his finest birthday suit, and dining lavishly on a donut with extra sprinkles. It was delicious, spectacular. Why it tasted so spectacular, he didn't know, but it filled his tummy and his thoughts. He could not think of anything else the rest of the day. At Topiary Club, his desires took shape. At Science Club, he found holes in every theory. Dad, Dad! At Sleepover Club, Lama dreamed sweet dreams. Dangerous dreams. Dreams so sweet and dangerous, they would lead him down an epic path of delicious destruction. Today! Today, Lama decided to make his dreams come true. So he did what any rational Lama of science would do. He packed slices of emergency cake, shimmied into his shiny new time travel pants, and then went back in time to his birthday so that he could eat his birthday donut one more time. Time travel pants, Vorp! But Llama did not know the first rule of time travel pants. Llama had not read the instruction manual. So instead of traveling back to his birthday yesterday, Llama Vorped right past it, past the donut, past yesterday, Past the past too? Long, long ago, Lama had traveled back long, long ago to a time of tubular hair, gnarly tunes, and the most radical pants ever created. His birthday donut was not here, no, but something from this other time called to Lama, something familiar. A different donut, sweet and spectacular, with extra, extra sprinkles. The donut looked lonely sitting there all alone, and Llama had a special place in his heart for lonely sweets. So Llama did the only thing he could think of to help the poor donut feel less lonely. Burp! Llama had broken the second rule of time travel pants, a rule not meant to be broken. Never change or eat the past. He had. He devoured every crumb and delicious sprinkle. He would pay dearly for it. Filled with delight and donut, Llama vorped back to the present without a care in the world. Vorp! Little did he know, someone followed him home. Today, again! It was today, again! And Llama was face to face with a peculiar individual. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Llama wasn't sure who this hungry looking stranger was, but there was something about the shy baby Llama that reminded him of past things he did not want to be reminded of. Llama chose his next words very carefully. I am Llama, proclaimed Llama. I am Llama, repeated Baby Llama as he opened Llama's cupboards. Llama disliked strangers taking his name, but not as much as Llama disliked strangers taking his snacks. Still, Llama was a gentleman, so he made Baby Llama feel welcome. He made Baby Llama a time travel diaper, and then he made Baby Llama disappear. Ta-da! Vorp! 
But Baby Llama came back. He was a quick learner. Vorp? He came back again. Vorp? Again and again. But each time Baby Llama came back, his time travel diaper had an accident and brought back others. Vorp? 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 They kept coming back. Tomorrow! It was tomorrow. And tomorrow's were Llama Spa Days. But on this tomorrow, there would be no fuzzy slippies or lavender scented bubbly baths. This tomorrow, Llama faced a crisis of historic proportions. Dad! Llama said nervously. Dad! repeated Baby Llama even more nervously. Llama's house was a battleground of chaos. Prehistoric war hogs laid siege to the cupboards. Buccaneer Bun Buns raided the cubbies and closets. And in the party room, ancient cave llamas had started clubbing while futuristic robopackas did the robot. It was the worst dancing llama had ever seen. The past and the future looked grim. Dad, dad, dad. Time was running out. In a matter of minutes, Llama's house would be torn apart, his invention smashed, his portraits mustached, and worst of all, his secret cake cellar would be ruined. All that cake, piles of cake, more cake than any one Llama could ever lift. He needed help. But who could he trust Baby Llama with his precious sweets? He could not. Llama dashed for the cake. Baby Llama dashed for the cake. I am Llama, cried Llama, turning on his time travel pants. I am Llama, repeated Baby Llama as he turned on his time travel diaper. But neither had read, neither Llama nor Baby Llama had read the 42nd rule of time travel pants. Warp boom! Llama and Baby Llama shot back through the past in a blur. The piles of cake were lost somewhere in time. Long, long ago, again, Llama and Baby Llama found themselves long, long ago, again. And Llama finally noticed something. Something familiar, something sad and lonely that he had tried to forget before. This party, the donut he shouldn't have devoured, this face in front of him, all were his from long, long ago. Baby Llama was Llama as a baby. And Llama, and as Llama looked at himself, he knew what Baby Llama wanted, what he really wanted. He knew what made sweet birthday treats the sweetest and most spectacular, and it wasn't sprinkles. So Llama made Baby Llama a fancy party hat. Llama gave Baby Llama his slice of emergency chocolate cake. Dad, said Llama, Dad, said Baby Llama. And then Llama helped Baby Llama not feel so lonely. I am Llama, introduced Llama. I am Llama, repeated Baby Llama shyly, sharing his cake. Now Llama was many things. A rock star, a tea connoisseur, a swashbuckler of the high seas. But most of all, Llama was a Llama of science. He knew there were spectacular donuts, spectacular cakes, out there just waiting to be discovered. In the future, with his friends. And that was Llama Rocks, the Cradle of Chaos. Thanks again to Macmillan Publishing for letting us read this. And we'll see you in the next story time. Bye.